And that camel and I had, to, to, you know, some issues. I was holding on for dear life. And going inside of the tombs at the Valley of the Kings, seeing them in color was just like amazing. These are colors on the wall surviving for thousands of years. Oh. A crocodile is a crocodile. <laughs> just you have to watch your stare at your hand, huh? Oh, right here? Yeah, around the neck and the middle of the toe. In the middle of the toe? Yeah. Ah! Personally, being able to touch and see the Nile River, the longest river in the world, I would look at the Nile and just see how beautiful green, emerald green it was. It was such a color that I'll never forget. Dr. Brown, so how do you feel about uh, being here at one of the ancient wonders of the world? Oh, I'm excited about it. Just to be here with you guys. This is a, a magnificent sight, isn't it? And there's three of them. I don't know the names yet, <laughs> but there's three of them. So I'm excited about it. Ready? Mm-hmm. Well, pick up where you left off. I don't remember what I was saying. You were talking ancient about... Ancient wonder of the world. Yeah. Know? Ancient wonder of the world. Here we are in front of the uh, only existing ancient wonder of the world. The Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid of Giza. It's a fantastic sight. As you can see, all the tourists are around. There are camels, people, people taking pictures. This is something that a lot of people don't get to see in their uh, in their lifetime. I'm very excited that I got a chance to be here. This is a land before before time, before Christ. There's a lot of history is going on right here. It's amazing we survived thousands. Thousands, thousands of years. We actually get to see it in person. So we get to the pyramids and everyone's all excited. And uh, we were told that we were allowed to uh, use our cameras. So I guess our tour guide Dahlia hadn't seen that our camera was different from everybody else. And she thought we had like a regular Walmart camera. I want you to stop because they are a bit, you know, <laughs> they do not accept it very much because it's big uh, oh. cameras and so on. <laughs> so let me check. So we get off the bus and, um, and Brian and I are checking the sound and everything. And, you know, I'm talking to the boom mic, make sure the sound's on and everything. And um, this guy comes up to us and he tries to sell us a headscarf that you wear on your head. Oh. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Here. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, thank you. This present for you. American? Yes. This for good for American. Okay. Have a thank good day. you. Yeah. Oh, We're going to go inside the um, the other pyramid here. Small money. Small money. 
We're doing heavy and small. American deals. money, Egyptian money. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hello? Anything in there? Uh, I don't have any money. Any small no. prison for money. <laughs> no, I, don't. Prison I don't have any small. American small. money, American. You don't have any American sorry. small. Sorry. Bigger money, he bigger money. We left our money at the hotel. Oh, my own, my own. You want the back then? Take it back. Look at myself. I was trying to be polite, and I was like, well, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. He's like, no, 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 try it on. He puts it on my head. And right when he puts it on my head, he goes, okay, you wear it. Now you gotta buy it. Now you gotta buy it. Are you still recording? I am. This is great. This is great. Miss Shepard, help us, please. Hey, hey, this hey. guy won't leave us alone. <laughs> you were he were took it away. Why? Because I wouldn't pay him for it. Oh, too bad you look darling. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should, I think you should get one. And then, right when I was trying to the guy, didn't one of these two police officers come over. I think it was one or two of them. And was Brown getting this on tape? Yeah, Brown was still rolling. We're going to go talk to some of these police officers. They don't know their camera's on. And uh, he comes over, the two officers come over and they're like, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you filming? You can't film here. Not with that camera because they thought we were the news crew because of the boom pole and the professional looking camera. And so I got one guy over here trying to sell me a headdress and I got another guy, two guys over here trying to arrest me and take me to where they're trying to take me. highlights of the trip was the pyramids um, when we first got there and actually when we got to go tour the pyramids because the students really motivated me to go in um, when I got up to the opening because I'm so tall I didn't realize how short the opening was and even though the tour guide told us that we was gonna have to bend over bend our backs over I thought oh, okay you know just a little bit I could duck but I had to really bend over due to my height and the students, they said, what happened, Miss Williams? You look like you just saw a ghost. Because when I looked down and it was dark in there, so I turned around and I said, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> but they was like, come on, Miss Williams. So I did it, and I really am um, glad that I did go through with it, just standing on the outside. By me being tall, they came, some of the blocks came up to my shoulders. And I'm about 5'10". So. <laughs> and I had to, to, you know, some issues, and uh, I finally got up there, but um, as the pictures will show, I was not quite as comfortable with it. I was holding on for dear life. <laughs> that was too much, too much. That was, it was really an experience, I tell you. The camel, not quite like a horse, used to a horse. But the camel is something that's a very different experience. He is a wonderful leader. He's a wonderful leader. I enjoyed riding the camel. I, I was not afraid. Uh, in fact, I was taking pictures while I was sitting on the camera. I was trying to catch photos of uh, 
the St. Augustine's team uh, on a camera, but for me, it, it was I was right at home. She was but a pro. <laughs> but the 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 real uh, fun part for me was just the idea of being in front of the pyramids and riding a camel. <laughs> so that for me was exciting. The thing that struck me about the camels was their 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 lazy or laid back demeanor. I don't know which one <laughs> it was, but they felt it was like they like they were giving off an attitude that I'm I'm gonna do as I please. <laughs> you're just you know taking part and you know you're taking you're just having a ride, but that's about it. But they were very lazy and just they they just took on their own pace. It was kind of like they were in they were, they were in command. Bumps were kind of rough though, but uh, it wasn't as bad as riding a horse. It was rough. Oh my god, I thought I was going to fall off a million times. But it was worth it. It was, cool. it was an amazing experience. Very different. Hard. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. So we can say that the whole city of Luxor, including the temples here and the West Bank as well, it dates roughly to the New Kingdom, which is 1567 to 1080 BC. So, Pharaohs, I'd like to tell you here, of course you can see the avenue behind. This avenue of Sphinxes, it was constructed by the Pharaoh Ramesses II in the 13th century BC. And if you look carefully under the head of uh, the Sphinxes, you can see the statue of Ramesses II. Can you see it? And the sphinxes are having the body of the lion and the head of the ram. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. We call these sphinxes the cryo-sphinxes. In ancient Egypt, everything had a meaning to them. Why having the body of the lion, the head of the ram, and the statue of Ramesses II under the head of the ram? All the rams here, they used to have a solar disk on top of the head, which is not there anymore, which symbolizes Ra, the sun. So it's Amun-Ra. So it gives the name of the king of gods, the father of gods, Amun-Ra. So as if Ramesses II is putting himself under the protection of Amun-Ra. In the tombs, you've seen a lot of that, especially on like the first level, like the level that was level with your eyes. A lot of them were like chiseled off. Why, why is that? Many of the tombs and temples had been used as a hiding place for early Christians of Egypt. This is because at the beginning of Christianity, Egypt used to belong to the Roman. Uh, empire. So the early Christians were persecuted by the Romans and the capital of Egypt then it was Alexandria on the Mediterranean. The best place for hiding then it was the south, tombs and the temples. So they used to hide there and they were tortured, they were persecuted because of these pagan gods or because of these figures. So they used to destroy them. At what level destroyment? Because many of them were covered by the sand. 
So in many of the places, if the sand is high, they destroy the upper part. When it was excavated and they removed the sand, you find the lower part preserved, the upper part destroyed. Hearing Valley of the Kings, I had never really understood what that was going to look like. I think I thought that we would be going out into the desert. And of course it is you know, really in the desert, but I thought perhaps it would be in the desert and that, that, that there would actually be what we consider a valley, an actual valley um, geological configuration. But it was complete opposite. They are in mountains. So that you go into this area where you have these high mountains and in all parts of them you have places where tombs have been built. And going inside of the tombs at the Valley of the Kings, seeing them in color was just like amazing. And like she said before about the pyramids surviving for thousands of years, these are colors on a wall surviving for thousands of years and it's, it was amazing. They were beautiful, very beautiful paintings. We saw there was still color on as if somebody had painted it a couple of hours before we came. And I was asking the lady, you know, how, how is the color still here? And she said that since it wasn't facing the sun, the sun wouldn't wash it out. What uh, the ancient Egyptians used for colors, I know you mentioned malachite Again, and they carbon. used malachite for the green color. You know, again, it's all natural minerals. And most of the colors were brought from Sinai back then. Okay. Again, it's like malachite for green and azurite for blue and red ochre for red. What and carbon, red? red ochre for red, red ochre. and carbon for black. And they used to have colors in between by mixing some of these colors right. together. And they used, again, an adhesive like egg white or blue. And they used to apply it using the shells. If you remember, in the Egyptian museum, the shells and the reeds were used for coloring. Okay. But in some of the cases, for example, for the blue color, they used either lapis. They used to grind okay. semi-precious stones mm -hmm. like lapis or turquoise. And you can tell the difference in colors, it's more bright.
Brian just dropped his shoes on the rug. We were taught the carpet, I should say. We were taught that uh, you're not supposed to have your shoes on the carpet, which is why everyone's walking around in socks for bare feet. The guy who built this mosque is buried in here. I mean, this is pretty historical, but what she said was that um, it was built by a Christian, who was at, who was a Catholic, actually, I should say, to be more specific. So there are a lot of mistakes that were made with the mosque, but people still. Um, they still treat it as a holy place. The architecture was amazing of the current time because I don't know if you got many pictures of the buildings as we were passing through the bus. I got quite a few of them and so did Colette as we were taking pictures like nuts through the bus. I just couldn't stop shooting because it was so different than America. And the buildings, because as our, our tour guide told us that because in order not to pay taxes, they don't finish their buildings. So as if you remember, people would live in a house, but it wouldn't be finished. So you had all these, these homes without windows, without roofs, and they would just build up, but they were just brick. And everything was very shabby looking, very poor. I didn't realize what a poor country it was. Cairo was so poor, and yet you know it's so wealthy because of all the oil and the other um, exports and things they told us about, but yet, the children are begging on the streets and asking to sell anything, and that was sad to see. One time when kids were very aggressively um, begging for money, and they kind of got false signals because one, one of uh, the students on the trip had, was actually giving them toys and stuff, and once she ran out of toys, they still wanted more out of it and everything. They kept following us. Everyone was a bit uncomfortable, including Ramal. Am, am, am I, am I you, right? you, you are telling the gospel truth, brother. Okay. <laughs> and at the same time, they were beautiful. The faces of the people, they were just beautiful people. And the smiles and the generosity. Everybody was very sweet and, and kind to us. And of course, all the children were saying, I love you, as they tried to sell us something. <laughs> they wanted to hear your name. I hear they always wanted to hear American. What is your name? I guess because our names are, are unique to them. Stefan! What's your name? Stefan! Stefan! What's your name? Ahmed. 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 They would be saying, American, American. And I thought they were saying, oh, you're American, when in fact they were saying, I'll take American dollars. <laughs> remember, because if they, remember how they said that if they, we paid them with American dollars, it was stronger for them. They could turn it into more money. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was an education that we, yeah. that we were learning.
ده نصابين يا عم نعدينا ابوه عماش I think I'd pay $20 for it. Yeah, that's, that's $20. He was talking about Egyptian. Well, maybe I'll pay $15. Huh? <laughs> we went to the Nubian village. Um, and as we were going, we stopped at the edge of the Sahara Desert. So we had an opportunity to climb. Some of us made it to the top, not me, but some of us made it to the top of that, of the the peak of the beginning of that Sahara Desert. And, uh, you know, I've, you've always talked, you've seen pictures of the Sahara Desert, but the fact that I was actually there. So I emptied my water bottle, although they said have water. I drank up the water real quickly and I filled it with sand so I could bring back part of the, the Sahara Desert to share. And the Nubian village in general, I think I enjoyed the experience of going to the Nubian village. Um, did not handle the crocodile. <laughs> did not want to pet the crocodile. Every Nubian house here, they do have a crocodile. So, uh, the crocodiles here in the house, it's like to keep the evil spirit away from the house, to keep the bad luck away. So, it's for good luck here in the house. After they got big for one meter or two meters, uh, we started to put them back in the lake. Uh, or, uh, we killed them and put them like uh, decoration in the houses. We don't eat the meat of the crocodiles. We don't use the skin of the crocodiles. We feed them fish and meat and tourist fingers. <laughs> a crocodile is a crocodile. Yes, you have to watch just at your hand, huh? Oh, right here? Yeah, around the neck and the middle of the tail. In the middle of the tail? Yeah. He's smiling, huh? Yeah, he's cute. <laughs> Don't, don't get that far away from him. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's a baby. Hey there. Okay, give him a kiss. Well. Oh no. He's beautiful. I enjoyed being in the home, seeing the lifestyle, and uh, walking through their little village. Most of what we saw was from ancient times. It's still very much alive and just being able to watch the students' eyes grow and watch the faculty in awe of, uh, of what they were seeing and that for me was just very fulfilling. Uh, and for me personally, being able to touch and see the Nile River, the longest river in the world, and just to be able to go on a four-night cruise and um, dock and go to various cities um, was for me just very thrilling. Before I went, I was told that the Nile was polluted and dirty and brown, but uh, when we were on the cruise and every morning when I'd wake up and take a few shots, I would look at the Nile and just see how beautiful green, emerald green it was. It was such a color that I'll never forget. 
I remember seeing the Mediterranean some years ago and just how aqua blue it was, but the Nile River was an emerald green that was pierced in my mind, and so that's for me what I remember the most. How did everyone feel about when um, we were on the boat and we came to a stopping point and all the, uh, I don't know what you merchants. call it, the, yeah, the merchants, they came up to the boat and was trying to sell us stuff and was throwing stuff up on the boat. How did you guys feel about that? I thought it was a very unique shopping experience. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not often that you're sitting on a and cruise yeah. liner and merchandise comes flying over <laughs> <laughs> the railing. <laughs> And the vendor is someplace far below you on the on the water, waiting for you to return the money. Where's my something? Where's my something? Wait, wait, wait! Come back to the boat. I think I had the first uh, experience of it as far as having dialogue with him. I was just standing on the edge over there in the corner, and this guy's talking to me. I don't know what he's saying, so I'm just shaking my head, yeah. <laughs> and the next thing I know, here comes a plastic bag just <laughs> flying over, you know. I mean, I guess they got good practice at it because they were, you know, awfully strong, had good arms. They're very trusting um, because initially you you really didn't understand when you got hit in the head with a <laughs> yeah. piece of merchandise <laughs> that they really were sending it up for you to look at it and then if you liked it you kept the merchandise and put money and then negotiated with them over the side about how much <laughs> you're going to pay so um, I know for myself I was going why are they throwing this hopefully you will buy it or you will be kind enough to throw it back over to them and so it was, a, it was quite an experience.